SV Boney was kind enough to send me the latest version of their well-known beginner astrophotography telescope, the SV Boney 70ED apochromatic refractor. Now, when I first started my channel, I actually did a review on this exact telescope, but back then it was a doublet refractor, but they've recently done some upgrades. So in this video, I'm super excited to show you some of the latest improvements that they've made to this telescope and show you what it's actually capable of. So as you may know, the big improvement that SV Boney made with this telescope was the upgraded optical design. As mentioned before, it used to be a doublet refractor, and in order for you to have perfectly shaped stars, even in the corners of your image, you had to buy their additional field flattener, which cost around $80. But now with this built-in field flattener design, since it's a quadruplet APO, you no longer have to do that. And I think that it's important to point out that when I made my first video of the doublet design, the price of that doublet APO was actually 413 US dollars. However, this quadruplet design only costs 399 US dollars. So rather than the price going up, it actually went down, which is really, really interesting. I felt like that was an important thing to mention because I truly do appreciate companies such as SV Boney and ML Astro because they are making products that are both high quality and affordable, which allows people to experiment with a hobby rather than being deterred by the high price tag. Let's take a look at some things that I both really like about this telescope and things that I don't like very much about this particular scope. And we're also gonna be doing a comparison between this telescope and the well-known ASCAR 71F flat field refractor, which is essentially the same style telescope, but it has a much higher price tag at 699 US dollars. One thing that I absolutely love about this telescope is the dual speed focuser. Many cheaper telescopes only have one bulkier focuser, kind of like what you would see on this side here, and it makes it difficult to achieve that precise, fine focus that's required for astrophotography. However, the SV Boney is, in fact, an exception because not only does it have that wider knob for faster focus adjustment, but it also has this narrower knob that allows you to really fine tune and get that focus super sharp. Another thing that I really like about this telescope is that the focus lock knob is here on the top, as you can see, whereas on the ASCAR 71F, that focus knob is on the bottom. And let me show you why that's an issue. The reason that this particular focuser design is an issue for me is because if you have a telescope mount such as the EQ6R Pro that has a wider head than my CG5 does, then if you have this telescope mounted, properly balanced, this focus lock knob will sometimes actually be covered by that mount head, so you will not even have access to unscrew or screw in this locking knob, which causes a big issue if you're trying to get set up quickly. Now, some things I wish that they had done differently about this telescope is I wish that it had come with a uh, finder or guide scope shoe, uh, which this in fact did not, which was a little bit frustrating because if you don't own a dual camera, like the ASI 2600 MC Air, or I believe it's the 585 MC Duo, um, then you are kind of forced to buy separate shoes and along with buying extra accessories. You also have to buy adapters to be able to connect your deep sky cameras. For example, I had to buy adapters to connect my 533 MC Pro to this telescope for imaging because this does not come with any, which I do understand why they wouldn't sell these accessories with the telescope because since this telescope is so cheap, they don't want to lose money while selling it but it would have been nice if they had perhaps included some of these adapters in the telescope package, but again, it's not a big deal. You can go and buy those online. But so far, without having done imaging with this telescope, those are the only things that I can think of that I both like and dislike about this telescope. So let's go ahead and get started imaging. We are going to be imaging the Heart Nebula, and we're going to take that data and compare it with the data from the ASCAR 71F flat field telescope. So, Let's get started.
so we have finished collecting all of the data needed to make our comparison and we are now here in the pics and site program and i am ready to take a look at what our files look like so let's open up first the ascar 71 f flat field data the first thing that you'll probably notice is that all of the stars look sharp and that there is no coma or haloing around the stars so it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to post process i remember when i had the doublet version there were extreme halos and it made things extremely difficult to process i'm glad i got rid of the doublet ed i am interested in seeing how much of a difference this quadruplet lens system is going to have on this telescope because at the end of the day the way that this image is going to come out will almost entirely depend on how good the optics are on this telescope so let's take a look first here at the nebulosity as you can see it's all sharp very clean the stars are all very sharp in fact as you scroll over to this part of the nebula you can see that there is another star in this small section next to this larger star. It's very difficult to notice, but it is there and you can see it. When we open up the next image, that's going to be a big test. We're going to look at that same star and see if it looks the same. So opening up the ASCAR 71F, immediately what you see is that haloing and coma effect that I was referring to before. Of course, it is not half as bad as what it was with the doublet ED. So there is definitely a significant improvement there. Of course, it's not as good as I hoped it was gonna be, but it is definitely improved. And if you look at the star shapes, even in the corners over here, nothing looks egg-like, nothing looks stretched. All of these stars look like they're in good shape. So that is definitely a big plus to not have to buy that field flattener, waste more money on a telescope when you can just buy a more expensive telescope and not have to deal with that. But again, this is actually a cheaper version than the doublet ED, which is crazy to me. Now let's look at that star that I was going to mention before. Scrolling in through here, I believe. Yes, yeah, so this is the star. We go to this area then that's the star right there there is definitely a lot more bloating in these stars than there are with the ascar 71f so you can even this star here is almost getting swallowed up by that star it's sharper here and you can see the shape of it but here is just barely sticking out there and the only reason you can really tell that it's there is because of the color difference of the stars here uh, so we're going to go ahead and process this data. I will show you what it looks like after the post-processing. But so far, what I think about this telescope, I really appreciate the fact that they upgraded the optics without upping the price. Um, I don't think that had they upped the price along with the optical system, I don't think that it still would have been worth buying. But since they upgraded the system, basically included that field flattener, it is worth the $399 that they have it for sale. It is comparable with the ASCAR 71F in terms of how sharp this nebulosity is. You can see that this definitely looks a bit cleaner than this does here, or honestly, it's really hard to tell the difference. The only thing that really makes a difference is star shapes, but that can be fixed with post-processing. So I'm gonna show you guys what this nebula looks like here in just a second. If you found this review helpful and enjoyed it, please make sure that you leave a like and subscribe to help support the channel and stay tuned for future content.